Hello everyone, it's Karen Berniston here with the class day recording for our September 2023 virtual class. So we're going to be making two cards in this video. The first one's going to be our fence three page landscape accordion in a miss you theme. Okay, so that's going to be our first card. And then for the second card, we're going to double stack it up and make this birthday card. You'll be able to kind of see something through the window there. And then when it opens up, it's got a happy birthday theme. And this one's going to be kind of a combination of leaving our landscape rectangle accordion die as a rectangle, as well as combining it with the cupcake add-ons. Um, and because uh, we had a little bit of a paper <laughs> situation, there wasn't enough red paper of either of these two designs to do all of the kits that us and the stores wanted to do. So you got one of these two papers for the front of your card, either the diagonal check or the um, straight red check. So either one's fine. And on this one, I actually did a little bit of a different look for the, um, you know, the greeting as well. So anyway, that's up to you. you. That was all addressed in the prep work video as to which one you got. Um, but you're only making one, you're only making one of, of these two. I just don't know which one, uh, which paper you have. Uh, okay, so let's talk about the kits. So way that, the way that we do these virtual classes is we sell kits for them on our website, karenberniston.com, but then we also send all of the kitting instructions to our participating stores and they also create the kits. And so we have sold out of kits on our website and I don't know at the time of this recording, I think at least one of the stores might have some kits left. What's nice about this being a pre-recorded virtual class is that you can do this at any time. So even right now, if you're gonna try and craft along with me, but you only got a certain amount of time and you gotta you know, get to a game or something like that, you can come back, this video is gonna be right here for you um, when you're ready to do your project or, or pick back up again. Um, okay, so we do have, the class day video is a public video, meaning that anybody can watch it. And some of you, welcome, you may be watching today and you didn't purchase a kit. But if you purchase a kit, what that gets you is it gets you the specific materials to make these two cards you can actually bundle it with the required dies. So for this month, that's going to be the Baking Charms, 1236, uh, Fence Add-ons, 1240, and Cupcake Add-ons, 1241. So these three dies, if you bought a bundle kit from the store, you know, that had your paper and your pre-cuts and your three dies, that's what you'd be getting. However, uh, on the months where we do add-on sets as the required dies, we do require that you have the foundation die. So for this month, um, it'll you know this one's size to fit our landscape rectangle accordion. So that's a fourth required die. It just put isn't put into the bundle of the dies because a lot of people already own it. It's a good foundation die um, that they may have already owned. So if you need that one, you'd have to add that on. If you contact the stores to buy a kit, you'd have to add that one on. Um, and then also in the kit that you would purchase from the store, you will get um, the PDF handouts for you to print. Um, those just come by email. And then included in that is the link to the prep work video. So the prep work video is how I took my bulk kit, you know, that had all the big chunks of paper and then used the required dies, the four required dies to cut all of the pieces down. So through in that prep work video that you should have done already, if you're a kit owner, you can watch it today, but you're really not gonna be able to make your projects until you go through and do your prep work. And the prep work is going through all of the paper pre-cutting instructions, putting your die cutting, um, pile together and then doing all your die cutting and then oh this is out of order sorry and then you stop when you get to class day instructions so you're here you're here right now class day instructions we're going to be going through these um, if you're a kit purchaser and you didn't realize there was prep work and no biggie um, just go right back in uh, to that email where you you got uh, your handouts and you'll find the link to that prep work video and then within that prep work video I will in the description box put the link back to this video uh, okay, so those of you who don't have kits, you may be thinking, well, how do I get access to those instructions and how do I get access to that prep work video? The quickest and easiest way is to buy a kit. Uh, go purchase one from the stores. You can buy it paper and pre-cuts only, which means you don't get the dies with it. You still need them, but you don't get the dies with it, but you do get the paper and pre-cuts. Um, that would be your quickest. I won't release the instructions and the prep work video to the public until all the stores are sold out of kits um, because that is what you're paying for. You're paying for your materials, but you're also paying for your handouts and your prep work video when you purchase a kit. Um, but there is an option to get it, just paper and pre-cuts. Uh, speaking of pre-cuts, so anything that was cut for these projects out of these four required dies, you cut, okay? You have the dies, you have the paper, you have the instructions, you cut it, and then you come to this video to put your projects together. If I used anything on the project that was from a die set that was not one of the, in this case, four required dies, like this miss you wasn't one of the required dies. That came from our WordSet 14 hugs. You can see it there, miss you. So in that case, the kit makers 
will have pre-cut those two pieces for you and those will be in your kit, whether you buy paper only or whether you buy it bundled with dies. Um, likewise, on the second project, there is a happy birthday and a happy birthday shadow. Those two dies were not required for this class, so um, those will be pre-cut in your kit. However, what I do is, because these instructions are so nice, a lot of the students do like to remake the cards. And so then I'll list what I used in the supplies and it'll just indicate next to it that it was pre-cut. And that way, if you wanna make this exact card again, um, maybe in a different color even, I mean, maybe you're gonna change out your papers, but you still wanna have it, you know, um, be substantially the way that you made it for class day, then you'll know which die sets you'll need to pick up. And so those are in your instructions as well. Okay, so we are going to dive right into our first project, which is going to be our three-page Miss You Landscape Accordion with the Fence add-ons. Okay, our card one is the Fence card. So from prep work, you've got all of the die cutting done. So we'll take all of those pieces and dump them out into whatever you've got to contain them. Maybe a paper plate. Let me use this tray. Um, okay, and so the first thing we need to do is we need to take the landscape accordion pages, okay? And we're going to align these with tabs to the right. So see on each page, there's this long tapered tab on the side, and that's what joins it to the next page, okay? So in all cases, the tab always goes to the right. And you never attach a tab to a tab, you always attach a tab to a page. That's the way the accordions work, and then you still have a tab to go forward. So. Anyway, with accordions, always tabs to the right. But before we join these together, it's gonna to be easier to add fences to them, you know, individually. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're going to show how to replace this pivoting rectangle with the fence, cut from the fence add-ons. And we'll do that for page three. But for page one and two, I thought it might be cool to show how you might use a half fence and a half rectangle. So we've got half fence, half rectangle on page one where the fence is on the right. And then on page two, we have half fence, half rectangle where the fence is on the left. And then those two will join together. And then we'll have these rectangle areas, you know, for, for different decorations. So it's kind of fun. You can do a mixed, mixed kind of accordion that way. Um, all right. So let's start here with page one. Okay. So for page one, we want to keep this half of the rectangle and we want to remove this half of the rectangle. And the easiest way to do that is to rotate on the pivot point so that the side that has the tab, the side of the rectangle that has the tab is sticking, I'm assuming you're right-handed. If you're not, if you're left-handed, go this way. But assuming you're right-handed, just get the outer frame pivoted and then you'll see that you're actually able to put your scissors right up next to that pivot point and go across to the other one, okay? And take off that, that side of the thing, see? So the pivot point is right where those cut lines stop, all right? And we remove that side. And then we're gonna leave this half for this page because we want that for page one. Okay, so page two, we're gonna leave the right half of the rectangle and we're gonna remove the left-hand side. So once again, I'm just gonna pivot it so that I can get my scissors in easily. But this one's easier, you know, basically I just wanna come maybe a little bit in from where the curve stops. So let's see, something maybe like I'll leave that a little bit attached so you can see. So see how it's got a little curved area? And I basically just took off a little bit next to the curve. Because I would, what I would like is I would like this area from the pivot point out to where I cut to essentially be no wider than the wide fence post so that it's mostly hidden. So the wide fence post when we add it is going to butt right up to that pivot point. And so I'm looking to have enough leftover rectangle to attach it to but not enough to stick out the other side of the fence post. Okay, and that's gonna be true of this page. That's gonna be true of this page where when we glue this on, and of course we'll cut off the, the rest of it, but you know, we wanna come right up to that pivot point with the fence. And so that's why you cut right along the, the pivot point there. Okay, page three, we're gonna do the whole thing. Okay, we're gonna do it like it's gonna be a completely a completely fence page, whereas this one, these two are going to be hard hybrid pages. Okay, so for page three, once again, we're going to rotate it. Okay, the side that has the tab on it, it's easy to get your scissors right up next to that pivot point and cut straight across. And that will remove the side of the rectangle that has the tab attached. And then on this side, just a little bit in from where the curve 
so that you leave, don't leave such a skinny stock that it's going to fall apart, but basically you want to leave about a fence post width section for the fence to attach to. Okay? All right. So now these three are ready for fences. So let's look at fences. So since we're using pattern paper, because I love that wood grain, then we had to cut six fences, even though we only needed three. And that's because the back of them is paintbrushes and we want the back of them to also be wood grain. So as you're looking at your fences, make sure that you're choosing the, they're all gonna be wood grain side up, but make sure you're choosing the ones where you can really see that you've die cut into this side of the wood grain side of the paper. And the way you can also tell that is the wide fence post will be on the right, not on the left, okay? So it's gonna be over here. Um, so if you pick up a fence that was cut from the paintbrush side, then you'll notice as you look at the wood grain side, the wide fence post is here on the left. So that's obviously one for the back, okay? So, um, so make sure that you're finding the right fences. We need three fences where we've die cut into the wood grain side, meaning that you have a wide fence post on the right, okay, with the wood grain side up. So here's my three fences, okay? Let's start here with this one, page three, okay? This one, we're gonna take, I, I like glue for this. We're gonna take our glue we're going to go up that leftover piece of rectangle there, all right? And then what we want to do is we want to glue that wide fence post to that yellow stalk, and we're trying to center it top to bottom in the opening. Okay, so I'm looking down here. How much space do I have? Let me put something. Oh, light's probably going to make my camera go dark, though. Uh, well, that's not too bad. All right, so see, I can see here, as I look around, I can see that, it, you know, it looks like maybe I have about an equal amount above the wide fence post top and bottom. But the main thing is I don't want to cross the pivot point, so I want that wide fence post to come right up to that pivot point but still be able to curve, okay, so you don't want to cross the fold. And then another check is that if you do this correctly, these little tabs are basically going to just brush. They're just going to come right to the edge of that inner frame on the right. Oh, mine's moving because I did not give it enough time. Hang on a sec. Push that down again. Okay, all right. Now this one's not gonna reach the edge. See that? Okay, only this side. So this side right here is gonna reach the edge and then that'll be a, a pivoting fence. Okay, so that's our page three. All right, then we're gonna do for this one, okay, we want only the left side of the fence because the right side we're gonna remove. So we're gonna take our scissors and we're gonna remove right next to the wide fence post in the middle and we don't need that part of the fence okay and instead we'll use I mean I guess technically I never thought about it but could have, well, no, I couldn't have because I didn't have the, the wide fence post uh, okay so now we're still glow is still going to go in the same area which is the area to the left of the pivot point just like we had a full fence okay and in this case once again we don't want to cross the pivot point with the fence, but we want it to be the same location up and down as we can get it to the um, to this first one, you know, which may be laying it over the top, you know, so that you can kind of get the same up and down location to the fence so that they'll all join together. That could be a way to do that. See that? Okay. So basically now we've got a half fence, half rectangle for page two. All right, and then moving on to page one, we're still only gonna use half the fence, but we always need the wide fence post. So we need the right side, so we're gonna cut off next to the wide fence post on the left. Okay, so that section is gone. And then once again, it's the wide fence post that's gonna glue to the rectangle. Okay, so a line of glue up the middle there. We don't want it to cross the pivot point, okay? but we want it to be in the same general location as the other one. So I could even lay this over the top here, help me kind of place it so I get the same up and down location on the fence post. Okay, so about there, but then making sure that I don't cross the pivot point, that this can rotate, okay? All right, so there we go. So now if you wanted to, of course, you could do all the pages with the full fence. So you could do all the pages with a half fence. So you could do some pages as a rectangle and some pages as a fence. You know, there's lots of ways you can 
you can do this. Um, okay. Okay. I think what I'm going to do is put a piece of cardboard underneath there. Because when I put white, then it messes with the white balance of the camera. And then the camera gets a little too dark. So we're going to try it with cardboard beneath it. Okay. So here's what I want to do. I want to now start attaching these three pages together. And we do that using the long tapered tab that are out on the end of each page. So if you work the folds of those tabs, feel free if you're a bone folder type of person to give those a good little, you know, thing. I think I already worked this one. I did when I was kind of showing about the tab. Now, technically on page three, we don't need the tapered tab because we don't have a page four. But sometimes working that fold will make it easier to see the fold so that you know where to chop it off. Okay, so I still just work the fold. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use that strong adhesive to join these three pages together. Okay, so now if you are crafting along with me, which is of course the way these are meant to go, is that the idea that you can craft along with me, but different than when we're in a Zoom class where you can just holler out to me, hey Karen, you're going too fast, slow down. <laughs> you don't have that option here, but it's on YouTube and you are in control of the pause button okay so if at any time I'm going too fast or maybe you want to watch me do each step and then you want to pause me until you caught up catch up totally fine you're in control it's on YouTube you can even slow down the playback speed if you wanted to all right so my adhesive here on the tapered tab for tab or for page one and then I want to attach page two to it so this is really easy to do by eye you know to get the top and bottom aligned in the edge right to the fold line but you do also have the option to lay page two over the top of page one and then fold the tab over and onto the back of page two like this so either way works whichever way feels most comfortable um, either you know doing it with the pages open just making sure you don't cross the fold or putting them face to face and then wrapping the tab over and onto the back of, of the second page okay and between those first two pages, it is going to be a valley fold. When we finally put it together, it's going to be a valley fold, meaning that that will be folded like that. Okay, now here in between these next two pages is going to be a mountain fold. So this one's actually going to fold this way, and this will attach to it like this. And then in the finished card, it'll be a mountain fold. So once again, you can put the adhesive here on the tab and do it just kind of by eye where you just bring it up to the fold but not crossing and then just paying attention to your top and bottom that those look nice and straight but you can also kind of get it started then get it into that flat position and give it a good press so in this case back to back whereas those two it was face to face but whichever way is easiest but you essentially want to get your accordion pages so that in between the first two is a valley fold and in between the second two is a mountain fold all right and then we're not going to connect the inner pages together yet because we want to do all of our decorating but we have to do a little modification for the tab right here because because when we attach a fence to a fence well it's designed that way these two little tabs on the left page you know the page that's this side will fold down and become the tabs that attach these two fences together. Not yet, not yet, because we haven't decorated yet. But eventually those two will connect like that. Okay, and if I had rectangle attaching to rectangle, well then this tab would just connect to the next rectangle, like that, okay? But now I've got a situation right here where I have rectangle that is eventually going to attach to a fence. Pardon me. These fences are a little flimsy because they're a pattern paper and so we get the other one on. Um, back here, eventually, we're going to be attaching this fence to this rectangle. Ooh, it's hard to see that on the camera. You know what? I'm going to just do it the wrong way just for the purposes of illustration because this isn't the way it's going to be. But I can do it this way for illustration. So see, that's going to come across and that tab is only going to hit one of my fence things right and then this one but it's not going to hit that one down there okay so what I want to do is I want to modify this so that it's just a little small tab that will hit this one okay so how do I do that just like you're seeing me do here I can bring this one over okay 
to decide. Now you could also do it, let's see, what if we rotated these, trying to find a flat position where we can check the location of that tab. This would probably be the easiest, this. Okay, so if I get this into a flat position, I can see, maybe take a pencil, let's see here. Okay, I can take a little pencil and I can mark, basically, on that tab where it's going to hit the fence post. Okay, see how I marked it right there? All right, then what I can do is I can trim away the rest of the tab. So that means a little bit off the top. I want to leave that bit that's what's going to attach because I've got to be able to attach it. Okay, so I'm going to leave that and then I'm going to take this bit off the bottom. So I'm left with just a little, oh goodness, Sean, I can't even figure out which way my card goes. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> okay, I'm left with just a little tab that is essentially, okay, the same as this, right? That's where that tab is. And this is where the other one needs to be. So where's that piece I just chopped off, okay? This will make the perfect lower tab. Okay, so what do I mean by that? Okay, I'm gonna put a little adhesive on it, leaving, leaving a little tab area out on the right without adhesive, okay? And then I'm gonna use that little trim fence as a guide to say, okay, well, my bottom fence post, or fence, I guess it's not really a post, it's a crossbar. My crossbar is about right there. See? So I just took the little bit of this tab and I moved it and had it stick out like it's a second tab, but it should be in line-ish. If it's a little off, it's fine, as long as they hit it somewhere with these two fence posts when they come across. All right, so now this one has a score line in it because that was the original tab. This one doesn't, so I'm gonna have to just put my thumbnail behind there so I can fold that down, essentially right on the edge of the page, all right? So now I've got two tabs. These are not gonna attach in front like this. These are actually going to, when we put this thing together, they're gonna to attach in the back. But it's hard to show that on the camera, so I was just showing it on the front. But eventually when we put it finally together, it's gonna to go behind there like that. And those two tabs are gonna to attach to that fence, okay? So, and the only reason we had to make that modification is because we're doing this hybrid thing where we've got half fence and half rectangle. So, you know, the rectangles are meant to connect to rectangles and the fences are meant to connect to fences. So when we do a hybrid, we have to do a little uh, modification to make that happen. Okay, so everything from here now is just, we're gonna do the decorating and then we'll put it together. Um, okay, so first things first, we don't need this tab out here on the right. I generally just use my scissors to cut it on the fold line, but you could use your trimmer if you prefer. But I'm just gonna take, and just, just the one on the, well, it's the only one you can the one on the right okay all right now we technically don't need inner tabs either and remember these right crossbars of each fence are the tabs that connect it to its neighbor now it also is decorative it looks fine having a, a crossbar out there the only reason to trim these a little bit is because right now they're gonna butt right up to that thing and see how they kind of creak you don't want your fence to get trapped in the opening because those are so close to the edge in the closed position so you can either trim them all the way off or you can trim about half off. I like to do about half so that I still leave a little crossbar just for decorative purposes. But now there's no way for it to get trapped in the opening because you've trimmed a little bit off. Just for the one on the right, just this one, not, not this one. We need those tabs to connect the fences together, not this one. We just made those tabs, um, just the one on the right. Okay, let's do some decorating now. All right, the first thing that uh, I wanna work on is the pattern paper frames. Okay, so during prep work, I had you use the same die that you used to cut your page. I had you take this yellow pattern paper and pre-cut it to, I think it was three and a quarter by five and three quarters, so that it was just a little bit smaller than the three and a half by six inch page. And I had you center that in the die and cut it. 
and then I had you take your scissors and gut out the pivoting parts out of the middle so that you're left with just this frame. And then what's nice about doing it that way is that the outer edges are already trimmed in so that you get that little border and the inner edges are going to perfectly match each page because they were cut with the same die. Okay, and we're going to add one. You have six of them here. You're going to add one. I did them all yellow side up to the front and flip it over and put them on the back. I don't think there's an up and down to that paper uh, because it's just kind of like little tick marks in some grass. But if you, you know, you felt there was an up and down, you can always look on the butterfly side and see which way the butterflies are going. Or if you like the butterfly better, you can put the butterflies up, you or a mixture, um, however you want to do it. But the way it was designed is to have the yellow both front and then on the back as well, okay? Okay, and so I recommend glue. Um, this could be done with a tape runner though, so that's up to you, it's just paper on paper. But when you get to actually assembling the tabs and things of the pop-ups and the accordions especially, I really do prefer a glue. So I'm using my fine tip bottle. It's got Lineco neutral pH adhesive in it. And um, that's my favorite, dries clear. Just a strong kind of PVA glue. My very favorite, but there's other glues that people love. So use your favorite. Whatever you have great results with, it's nice and strong and preferably dries clear. <laughs> Unless you're just super, super accurate, which I am not. Uh, okay, got my first one on. Uh, so. With these fine tip bottles, they come empty and you can put whatever glue inside, but of course it has to be glue that will go through an 18 gauge tip like that. So it can't be the thickest glue, like I wouldn't put, you know, glossy accents or anything like that in here. Um, but what really helps with any time you're using a needle tip bottle, ours or otherwise, is if you will use a damp paper towel in a jar, and I just squirt it with water each morning, um, and just keep that needle tip down in that damp paper towel while you're crafting, then it'll just keep your glue flowing. The, um, the entire crafting time. And you don't have to worry about it um, clogging up. And then, you know, you gotta take the needle tip and you gotta unclog it. And you don't have to do that if you just use a paper towel trick. So, okay. So we do these virtual YouTube classes once a quarter. And your best way, because like on this one, uh, we make a limited amount of kits for our website. Um, and we don't, re we don't make more, but sometimes the stores will make more. If they have a lot of interest, they'll, they'll make more, but we don't. So um, when they're gone, they're gone for us. Uh, but anyway, when, um, when we send out the email, like the kits sold out just like immediately. So if you think you want to get in on this for next quarter, which would be in December, um, look if you, if you will subscribe to our newsletter, so if you go to karenberniston.com and then at the bottom there's a place you can put in your email and subscribe to our newsletter. We don't send a ton of emails. Um, you won't get bombarded. But, when, you know, just keep an eye on those emails and then it'll, when a class is announced, you know, then you can uh, find out about it. But remember, if ours sell out, usually the stores, um, you, you have lots of places to buy them. Okay, I'm going to flip this over. I'm going to put my three pattern paper frames on the back as well. Now, that's certainly optional. If you were wanting to make a whole bunch of these cards and you wanted to save some paper, um, you know, you could certainly not put pattern paper on the back. But when you do, then you get a chance to cover up the tabs from where you connected the page to together using those pattern paper frames. So you definitely don't want to put the, the frames on the back until you've connected all your pages together so that you have the opportunity to have the pattern paper go over the tabs. Um, but yeah, so uh, so once a quarter, we do these YouTube classes. Um, you can always watch the class day video, this video, you can always watch this one. Um, you don't have to have a kit to do that. And if you just wanna use your own papers and you have these dies and you wanna just use this these projects as inspiration and learn how I made them and make your own version, you absolutely can do that. Um, or if you want them in these exact colors and not to have to think too much about, you know, the pre-cutting and have some beautiful PDF instructions and a prep work video, then, uh, then uh, contact one of those stores and see about getting a kit. Um, okay. 
And then if you, um, this format is like I'm crafting and talking right to the camera. So whatever mistakes I make, whatever noises you hear, <laughs> whatever dogs are barking, whatever cough, whatever, you know, it's all gonna be on here. Um, but I also do YouTube videos um, once a month for our designer challenge. Those are here on this same channel. And for those ones, um, you know, they're edited and stuff. So, so, you know, it's, it's, they're a little quicker paced and a little, you know, they're, they're a voiceover type of thing. So it's not as, uh, you know, you won't hear any dogs barking, hopefully. Uh, okay. So there's the back with our, um, pattern paper frames. I just had a, I was like, oh, what was I just saying? Um, okay. So now see, since we have paint brushes on the back of these fences and because the fences are a little flimsy because they're patterned paper. Now we're gonna use those three that we cut where we die cut from the paintbrush side so that the wood grain would be up when we matched up the shape of the fence. So we'll be able to now glue those to the back and then it'll, you know, it'll both take away the, um, the patterned paper look on the back, but also it'll cover up the mechanism. It'll end up being sandwiched between the two fence posts so that nobody really sees how it was done. Okay, so the full fence, we're on the back now, so we're on the back, so page three is page one, you know, as you're looking at it, but um, the full fence is gonna go on first. And um, we did trim a little bit of the crossbars off on the first fence so that's not the side I'm going to use for lining up. In other words, this side, remember, we already trimmed a little bit off, so these aren't gonna match up perfectly on those. They'll overhang a little bit, and then we'll trim them to match. So use the fence posts, I guess is what I'm saying, um, for your lineup to make sure that you get this perfectly over the one underneath. Okay. think I'm sitting here doing this and I realized uh, yeah I did okay let's see if you can't you can't it's okay but let's see if we can keep the right side just in between the crossbars let's see if we can keep that not connected okay and that way we can slide those two tabs in between the layers I forgot I did that so see when we go to put this together we'll be able to slide that between the layers and you won't see them. Now, if you already did it, because you're crafting along with me, and um, those are just sealed like glue, it's not that big of a deal that the tabs would be connected back here. You know what I mean? It's like a little tiny bit of yellow, so it won't matter, but I forgot that I did that. So if you can keep those apart. And then what we'll do on these two is we can put, let's see, let's put, yeah, we can still put them on. That's fine. Let's see. Okay, this one, we need to figure out which section we need. Okay. And we need to trim it right here so that we have this section. But you know what? I think maybe I will just wait to put it on until we've connected it together. So I'm just going to have that at the ready. I'm not going to glue that on just yet. And then for the last one, we need this part of the fence. Okay. And I mean, technically I get now, cause then you'll have little pieces sticking out. So you really wanna, you wanna trim off this right side. Here and here, let me flip this around so you can see what I'm working on here. Okay, so this one's gonna go here, all right? Now, what we can do is on this one, like when we connect these fences together, we really just need one, this set of tabs. In other words, we don't need it to be double thick. We don't need, you know, that'll be cumbersome. So on this one that we're gluing on the back just to change the color, we don't need these tabs on the left-hand side here. We can just trim them off, okay? Then when we glue them on, and we can go ahead and glue this one on because no tabs are coming in from this side. If we glue that on, then we've just got these two little tabs sticking out that'll still be the kind of the green paintbrush color, and that's fine. That's all we need to connect to the next one, and we'll wait to put this on until we've glued those two together, okay? All right, so I can glue this on. 
see that's the difference between recorded live narrated live and uh edited too is because like if i'm uh, if i'm doing a youtube video for my designer challenge and i like make a mistake or whatever i'm like mm, maybe just start that part over again but not this so. okay so this is going to go on here And I'm just using the fence on the other side as my lineup, making sure all the fence posts line up. Okay. Very nice. All right, so we're on the back. We're going to save this one. Uh, and I guess while we're on the back, we can go ahead and do a little bit of the decorating. Let's see. Yeah, why don't we? Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so we're on the back now. We're on the back of the of the thing. So when you're on the front, the full fence is on the right. When you're on the back, the full fence is on the left. And you can tell because your middle fence is paintbrushes in the middle. Okay, so as you look at the back, we're on the back. If you find that big um, pattern paper rectangle that we cut, that basically this is just used to glue on the back to cover up that business of that um, that tab that we made. So this is just decorative, it's on the back. It's mainly just to give it a little bit of a cleaner look because we had to make our own tab. So you can put that with an equal amount of border on these three sides as I think probably maybe what looks the best, but I leave it to you. So see, it'll cover up that bit of tab right there. Ooh, this color, oof, I don't like it. Okay, um, and then let's go ahead and put on our decoration here for the back where we're gonna sign the card. Okay, so that one is, let me find the piece that we're doing. Ooh, did I not cut it? Okay, well, I missed a piece. I can't believe I did that, but that little yellow rectangle right there, I meant to tell you, one of these pieces that you just trimmed off or whatever will be perfect for this. Grab that um, small rectangle out of your landscape rectangle accordion and just cut you a rectangle to go right there. And that's just as a place to sign the card. So I am sorry, I usually do a pretty good job of not of catching any missed pieces during prep work, but I guess I didn't turn my card over when I was counting the pieces because I missed that one. So you need one little rectangle as a place to sign the card. So go ahead and die cut that out of just one of the scraps of yellow from your um, thing. Now, those, that's what nice about this being on YouTube, because those of you are like, I already did my prep work. I don't have my, uh, my um, die cutting machine out. Well, yeah, you don't have to do this now. You can do this whenever. So just, I'm gonna show you where it goes, um, but it could always be added later. It can even be added after the whole thing is um, put together because it's on the back and it's there for a reason because it's easy to sign it if you put it on the back on that page. Whereas anywhere else that you put it would be, you'd be signing in the air, you know what I mean? But by putting it on the back right here, then you can sign it even after your card is all put together. So what I'm saying is if you don't have time right now, my mistake, to um, die cut that rectangle, just go ahead and do that whenever you have time. And then see, like, I go ahead and put the adhesive everywhere because I know it's going to dry clear. Um, I just may want to take a scrap behind there so I don't get it on my thing. And then it looks like I put it, let's see where I put it, because I kind of want it to be disguised by the decoration on the front. So I'm gonna put it here where it's basically starting in the second fence post and going over here and then just top to bottom on the crossbar. So when I'm looking at the front, I can see yellow through four of the openings. And then I'm going to essentially disguise that with my little cluster of flowers and grass on that page. Okay, so yeah, so one little, um, rectangle there. I mean, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully that's the only page I, I, uh, I mean, the only little piece I missed uh, in the instructions. So, okay. Let's put on a little flower while we're in the, the business here. So I, it looks like I used a pink flower. Oh, you know what? Let's not do that. No, I'm remembering something. Let's, well, I'm going to use that flower so that it matches up with the one on this side. So we'll put it on last. Okay. Let's turn this thing over and start the decorations. All right. And remember, don't lose this little half fence because we need that for the back. All right, let's start here on page one. 
All right, so page one, we're gonna use one of our wooden frames. So that was cut with the landscape rectangle accordion, that cool little wooden frame, which by the way, has a very cool stamp feature. You can, we didn't do it in this project, but you can coat this die with ink and when you stamp it, it will actually um, press ink down into the wood grain texture that um, is in that die. And if you don't ink it, then it just pushes the texture in. And those of you who are looking at your own piece, you will really be able to see that cool stamped uh, texture that's on that piece. Now, we're gonna back this with that, um, the stitched rectangle uh, the, of the pattern paper. So the little same little dashed yellow pattern paper. So it's just a little bit bigger than the opening. So you just need the glue on the inside edge of the opening of that frame. And then I think the stitch lines end up sort of like right, you bear, you don't see the stitch lines because they just barely get covered um, when you glue it behind like this. Okay, all right. <laughs> Y'all, oh my goodness, I'm so silly. Okay, hang on, let's put a piece of grass in there. Let's, let's tuck some grass between the layers. You think I should have uh, watched my instructions first? Let's see, okay, I'm gonna take a piece of grass, I'm gonna cut it. Okay, and let's try and tuck a piece of grass between those layers. So, a little bit of glue on the bottom of the grass so that it's connected there. So, okay, so it is frame and then a little grass and then the stitch rectangle. And then I have it where I can still, I, I didn't glue the blades of grass down so that I can still tuck flowers in behind, okay? And what we're gonna do for this one Okay, if you want it to match my, I mean, you know, you can always do your own thing, but you've got these little two, two leaf stems, right? I had you cut a whole bunch of them and they can be stacked together to make, um, you know, taller stems. So we're gonna stack three of these together to make a six leaf stem. All right, so I almost wonder if we wanna be on the, we wanna be on the darker color. Yeah, I think so. Okay, so, you can do it, you can do it however you want. I actually think, uh, well, let's see. I think if you just trim off the bottom, okay, under the leaves, all right, then you can glue that to the first stem, however high you want the leaves to be, all right? So I can add some glue there and put on that second one. So I'm just leaving a little distance between the leaves there. Um, and then the third one, again, I'm gonna cut off the area below the leaves. So it basically starts at leaves. And I'm gonna add a little glue top here. And glue that on. Okay, and now I have the six leaf stem. And that is going to go into my frame. And I'm just going to tuck it behind the grass and you can kind of go up as high as, I mean, leave yourself some room for a flower, but maybe something like, ooh, how's that? Get the angle that the camera doesn't always, I mean, well, it's not really the camera, it's the lights. Don't always love the super light colors. Um, all right, let's talk about blue bonnets. So. This die set, and you know, I live in Texas, and so the Texans are really happy with the blue bonnet die. It is, you know, it's blue bonnets if, it, if you cut it out of blue, but it could certainly be some other flowers in other colors. So uh, I don't have a green thumb, but like hollyhocks or lilacs, you know. Um, and the tall stem is perfect for the blue bonnet. So I usually just put the adhesive up the middle of the stem, and then I kind of get the top blue bonnet kind of to the top of the stem, it's up to you, but basically the little shoot off stalks can kind of be visible between some of the blue bonnets, you know, depending on how you put it on. Um, and you can, of course, change that between one so they don't all look the same or however you want to do it. But while we're in the business of assembling blue bonnets, let's just go ahead and assemble all of them. So I believe you're making six or five. One, two, three, four, maybe we're making five. Uh, let's see. One, two, it's really, it's really looking like a fiver. No, it's supposed to be six. Oh, one's hidden. Six, we're making six. Okay, so let's just go ahead and make blue bonnets. Um, yeah, 
All right, well, while I'm making these, I can't remember if I finished saying, I just basically just said, we do these once a quarter on the YouTube. Um, and if you subscribe to our newsletter, then you'll find out about the other ones. And then the other place you can follow us is if you are a Facebook user and you're new to our brand, we have a fun Facebook I guess it's a fan group called Karen Berniston Pop-Up Peeps, P-E-E-P-S. And you just have to go search for that on Facebook and then um, ask, uh, you know, you have to answer like three questions to, but so just so we know, you know, that it's a crafter that's joining and not somebody that wandered in and didn't know what that was about. Or maybe they like the candy or <laughs> I don't know, whatever those marshmallow things. Um, so anyway, so answer a couple questions like, do you have a die cutting machine? And, um, and that is a great place to get information about um, inspiration with the dyes and show off your own projects. And people are posting from all over the world. So it's a really active and fun group. People are very kind in the peeps group. Um, it is a brand specific group. So it's not just general pop-ups that you make with other companies' dyes, those ones you would wanna put in their fan groups, but um, anything you made using our dyes. And you can certainly mix and match other products in there from your other favorite brands. But, um, you know, the focus has to be on our brand for the pop-up peeps group. But anyway, that's a great, a great uh, resource for you. All right, so I have six blue bonnets assembled. And then I think on the little flowers, we'll just do them as we go. So here in my little frame for page one, I'm going to stick a blue bonnet in. I mean, it's personal preference. I kind of like it when things go out of the frame. I just find it visually interesting. Um, but that is up to you as to where, where you put your blue bonnet and whether it sticks out of the frame or not. Absolutely a personal preference thing. Okay, but I'm gonna have mine stick out. And then I put a pink flower on top of my three, um, three my stacked three stem there. And then the center that I put on this one was one of the white ones. So again, this is all open to your own interpretation. You do not have to match mine by any means. Use your pieces as you see fit. But then there's, there's the little decoration for this first half rectangle right there, okay? So that'll just fit on there just like that with just a barely bit of yellow showing. You can go ahead and glue that on. So we're here on the front of the album, so you should have a half rectangle here on the left with just enough yellow space for that frame. Okay. This one's actually gonna end up pivoting this way. Now, sometimes when you go to pivot these, if it feels a little hard, it could be that this bottom fence post is on the opposite side of the pivot point because either however you assembled it or whatever, so let's say you're like, oh, I wanna, I wanna rotate this, this one, but it's giving me some resistance. Just look down there and see if your uh, fence post is behind the pivot point. And if so, just still rotate it. It'll, it'll give you a little satisfying click when it clears it. And then you'll get it pivoting the right direction. Okay, same thing can be said if you're going this way. No, that one works fine. This one, yeah, no, this one's gonna, yeah, this one's gonna go this way. This is gonna have to go to the, th this side's gonna have to go in. So again, I'm like, oh, it's not easy to do. And that's because this little fence post right here has to clear that pivot point before it can rotate this way, okay? Oh, I'm seeing something. I forgot to trim the half of the tab off of my back fence. All right, so now it matches. All right, so there we go. Okay, so moving on with our decorations. Now we're going to do, um, you know what, let's go ahead and let's move over to our other half rectangle. Let's get that out of the way as well because we, when we put the miss you on, it's gonna hang off a little bit and that'll dictate where we're gonna put the rest of our pieces. Um, so for the first frame, we put the stitched rectangle behind the frame. You can also put it on top of the frame for a different look and then you'll be able to see the stitch lines and then of course your, your frame is a thinner because you know, you've covered some of it up. So for this one, we're gonna put it on the front of the frame. So we're gonna use our adhesive around here like this. Okay, and then this one's gonna go right into that adhesive centered. Ooh. This. Okay. 
Okay, and then that's gonna go in this yellow area. You have a little bit more room on this one so you can kind of decide. I think I ended up, I did, I just ended up centering it so I had the same amount of yellow to the left and the right of that frame. You see that there? Okay, so glue that on. Okay, so basically it ends up for me where I thought it looked the best was the edge of the um, frame ends up being kind of about even with those rectangles there. It's going to be a good spot, but again, open to interpretation. Um, all right, so Miss You, this is from our Word Set 14 hugs. Okay, so this cute little set comes with hugs and a shadow, Miss You and a shadow, sending a and smile and a shadow, and then it has a tiny little heart. Um, and the heart will miss will fit the little heart of Miss You just perfectly. Now, one thing that I like to do is I like to minimize the pre-cuts that the stores have to do. And I knew that um, in our uh, required dies this month, there were hearts. You know, there are hearts in um, the baking charms and there's hearts in the cupcakes. So I knew that you had access to a small heart die that would work for that Miss You. So I had you die cut the heart. Um, and. So what you're going to do is you're going to get out your pre-cut Miss You and Miss You Shadow and you're going to glue those together. And I didn't do any inking or anything on it. I just left it that stark white against that beautiful metallic blue. And uh, so I didn't, you know, a lot of times with the words like this, I'll ink like the bottom half or something. But I just thought this looked so good just as it was with that contrast. So, okay, so Miss You in the middle of the shadow and then some adhesive in the heart area and that heart that you cut so that this is not in your pre-cuts you cut it during your prep work you cut a little pink heart and that's going to go centered in the heart of miss you but if you get this set it does come with its own heart so, uh, that is an option uh okay so once you get that put together then that's gonna go here. Now you do want to make sure that you keep it on the page. In other words, don't let it hang over into the tab area because we've gotta use that for a mechanical function later. So it can come up to the edge of the yellow but can't cross over into the tab area or hang off the edge. The angle of it is completely up to you. So I kinda of did it at a little bit of an upward angle like this and the left side ended up being just kinda of even with the left fence post, the inside of the fence post and then the U came close to the edge of the yellow for placement. And then top to bottom, I just kind of centered it. Now this beautiful metallic blue that we've used for the blue bonnets and for this Miss You shadow, um, those, that's a paper that's from the paper cut. So the paper cut is where we get all of our specialty papers um, for the classes and stuff. And they have just beautiful, beautiful. So um, that one's called Fair Blue, I think. So Silk Metallic, I think that's what it's called. Yeah, just gorgeous, gorgeous color. Okay, all right. So now we can start making our little scenes with our grass and our flowers. And, you know, it doesn't really matter that it matches mine, but I'm just gonna go page by page and kind of do the same thing. All right, so with the grass pieces, they are a nice size to span sort of half the fence, but you can also cut them in half to make smaller pieces. So for this first page, what I did is I didn't cut it in half, but as you're looking at it, see how there's that one single piece of grass in the middle? I kept that by cutting just to the left of it. So I had a piece that was essentially single, single, double, single, double, single, you know? And then that is what I used on the first page, gluing it here and then tucking some flowers in. So what I like to do, it's, it's up to you, but what I like to do is just use adhesive along the bottom of the grass like this, okay? And then just attach it to the fence. And I'm trying to see what I did here, about right here. Okay, I, probably, I stuck with the skinny fence posts pretty much. All right, and then you can still tuck flowers in behind the blades of grass. So I just use adhesive across the bottom. And that's why I like that dries clear glue because I don't even have to worry about the little bit, you know, that's not gonna get covered on the back because it'll dry clear. 
and it dries non-tacky, so that's an important thing too. Um, okay, so for here I just did some of the little um, flowers, but I did make a double stem for one of them. So the way we make a double stem, again, is we cut off the area of the stem below the leaves of one of them, and then we attach it to the other one, however much distance you want between leaves. Well, that's just personal preference. Okay, so that's our first uh, leaf set, stem, I guess I should say. And I kind of had that coming up a little bit angled to the left. And again, I'm just using my glue, even though there's areas where the glue will squish through. So I guess depending on what you're working on, make sure you're working on something that you don't mind glue squishing through. So if you're on your dining room table, put down some scratch paper or something if you're doing it like me. Um, okay, and then I did a single stem for the other flower. Single stem, something like this maybe, a little overlapping, I don't know, your choice. And then both of those got yellow flowers with pink centers. Okay, so I'm just gonna glue flowers on. I mean, this is all stuff that you could assemble the whole flower before you put it on the thing, or you could, you know, put the flower centers on, and then, the, you know, I'm just assembling it all on the fence. But that is up to you. Okay, and then we're going to do pink centers. Pink center there. And pink center here. Okay, all right, let's go to page two. Now we're gonna get into some blue bonnets here. Oh, I should have said too, keep those little half pieces of grass. I don't remember if we if we use this one. I think we do. Yeah, we use this one right here. So that little half piece of grass, you just have to take off the chunk on the right so that it's just, you know, that piece there and then we can use that on the edge, which we'll do at the end because I'd rather have the thing together when we glue that on. Um, okay, so for this one, we're going to use a full strip of grass, okay? And we really would like to not cross the end of the tabs. Let me get my cardboard over there again. Okay, so your tabs come to here. When you put the grass on, don't have the grass sticking out here because you're going to have to mow it. If you keep it, the grass can touch it. It can go up into it. It just can't go over the edge because we're going to attach that to the tabs later, okay? Once again, I like to just use my adhesive along the bottom, a straight line along the bottom of the grass, and then I'm just gonna line it up with the bottom of the fence such that that left blade doesn't go past the tab, okay? And then for this one, where am I, blue bonnets? I did two blue bonnets you can kind of tuck them in there and check your locations and stuff and make sure that you like them first. And then a little single stem uh, pink flower. All right, so. Adhesive on the back here. So the other nice thing about this being on YouTube <laughs> is that uh, the timing doesn't matter so much, meaning that, you know, this is going to be a long video because we're doing two full cards, but you don't have to do it all in one setting. So if you're here just to do this card right now, no biggie, you just come right back and um, you can watch the second one and do it whenever you want to. So Okay, we'll put that there. We've got a single stem pink flower, tuck that in, something like this, pink flower, and white center. So now we've finished 
the decoration for page two. Your, this one, like I said, we'll do that edge decoration after we get it put together so that it can hang over the edges and you can make sure it doesn't catch anything or whatever, you know, because you, you've got things coming through that opening. So uh, we'll, we'll hang on to that. All right, we'll just go over here and do our third page decoration. Let me just back fold this so I can fold that down so you can see what we're gonna do there. Um, this is just a full thing of grass and some blue bonnets and flowers, you know, basically in an attempt to sort of cover up this business of the yellow rectangle that you can see through the piece. Okay, so last full grass, putting my piece of across the bottom only. This one I basically, which way is this gonna rotate? This is gonna go this way, yeah. So, okay, if you're gonna put it, like I did, across the bottom, but into the center fence post, make sure that you don't glue your grass to anything yellow, okay? So here's what I mean by that. Right now, it's possible that a little bit of glue will go through the grass and, and possibly pin your grass down to the yellow, but the yellow, it's got a pivot there. So just maybe you even wanna lift it up as you put this grass on so that you don't accidentally glue it to the yellow, or you could do something like grab a post-it note, you know, and go in there and protect your yellow so that it doesn't get glue on it you know, when you're putting your grass on. So whatever you think is easiest, but just make sure you can still pivot that with grass attached. Um, all right, and then we've got two more blue bonnets. So they're kind of in the center, like this. And then I did a two, a, a stacked two stem, and then a single stem. So the single stem's over here. I'm gonna start with that single stem. Over here, it looks like actually I kind of went, hmm, let's go right there with it. You know, I like to do things at fun angles, but you know, just whatever your preference is. You can have all your, your flowers straight if you prefer. So having these fence add-ons, and the cupcake that we're gonna use on the second card. So doing add-ons for foundation dies, we're all about it because, um, you know, dies are an investment, they're a tool. And when you invest in a die, um, we want to come out with new looks for it, new ways to, you know, give it new life and stuff. Um, and so that's what these add-ons do. So they, you know, they take a die, like the landscape rectangle accordion, and they just give you, you know, a completely different look. Um, but then what's nice about the fence set, too, is that it can be used on its own. I mean, it's just a great fence. It's been chopped apart, but, you know, even on its own, it can be used, you know, I've got the wrong side of the fence, but essentially it's, <laughs> it makes a really cool fence that you can just use as its own, as its own thing. Uh, okay, so I'm going to make a stacked two stem for... left side there. I don't know, I guess I probably could have moved that out a little bit. It's a little bit crowded. Hair optional. Definitely don't have to put hair in your project. Move that a little bit. Okay, so then we should still have a couple pink flowers to go on there. Oh my goodness. This one's right over a gap, which will be fine. See, it's pretty well disguised, the yellow um, rectangle that's in the back. You don't see it too much. Um, okay, but when I flip that, oh, you know what, let me put the centers in, sorry. So we're gonna do white flower center and yellow flower center. Um, let's see, yellow over here. here. 
Okay. Then when you flip it over, I remember now, then I thought the location of the flower on the back might be placed such that it kind of lines up with the flower that you can see through the fence if you happen to have put it in the same location as mine. So that's why I saved this flower till the end is you've got this one spot where you can see the flower from the front through the fence and that makes a great spot for your, um, your back flower because you know it won't be seen from the front because it's lined up perfectly with the one that's on the other side. Okay, if not, you could keep it in the fence area so that you don't see it. Um, okay, all right, I think we have everything now ready to go for getting this thing together. And then the last thing we'll do is that little cluster decoration there, which should be our last blue bonnet, the half piece of grass, single stem with a, with a pink flower and a yellow center. So I have everything I need. <laughs> I guess I only missed one piece, which is good. Um, even though it'll still drive me crazy. Uh, okay, so let's get this thing together here. All right, so the first thing you do when you're putting, and this goes whether you've got a fence accordion, a rectangle accordion, fancy label accordion, any of the accordions, I always say start by just folding the pages themselves accordion style. So we start with a valley fold and then a mountain fold. And if we had more pages, we would continue going. Valley, mountain, valley, mountain, valley, mountain. And if you're looking at it as it stands on the table, then what you wanna do is you wanna take the left, sorry, the right, <laughs> the right side of page one and pivot it towards the middle. But it's the left side of page two. So again, that might be a thing where you're gonna have to push it through the opening if it's you know, catching on a pivot point or anything. And when you do that, then these two fences are going to come together just perfectly for you. So let me see if I drop that down. Top view, you can see. See how that's gonna bring those fences together? It is the tabs on the, le the first fence, the left page. Those are actually tabs, so those will fold. These ones over here do not fold because they just attach to those two. So the only fold is in the first page tabs. Those fold down, you add your adhesive, okay, to the two tabs, and then we're just going to press it to the two tabs on this page two. And it's a small tab, so this is something where you're gonna just take a second to really pinch it so that those two tabs from page one's fence, let's see if I can get a good angle there, are basically attaching to the other one. It's hard to see because they're all green right now. Okay. And then that, and that'll bend as a mountain. Okay. So you've got a valley back here and then a mountain here. Okay. If you were making just a two page album, you'd be done. You wouldn't even have this one. So it'll work as a two pager as well. Um, okay. Back here on the back. Okay, remember we have this fence to go on there that will, um, that's not the right one. No, yeah, no, this this one. <laughs> it's this one. So don't lose that fence and then I have the wrong one. Um, okay, so that's gonna glue on the back there. Now, one thing is these ends where the tabs are, they're basically going into a valley fold now here on the back, okay? So you don't want to, as you fold it, they shift everything over because they push it. So what you may wanna do is take just a smidge, not the whole thing, but just a smidge off the two little tabs so that you're basically bringing them away from the fold just a bit when you line up the fence. So you'll see, I mean, just an ever so slight amount of green in the fold, but that's better than it shifting your fence, if that makes sense. So let's put the adhesive all over this half fence. Now, I've gotta be careful because it's, it's no longer flattens, right? It doesn't flatten in the popped up position. So I'm gonna slide that in. And when I put that on, I'm going to press against my hand, not against the project. So what do I mean by that? I'm gonna pinch those two fences together like this, giving it presses in where I'm not pressing the project, but I'm pressing against my hand, okay? And then I can close it, then I can give it a really good press, okay? So if you wanna give it a press in the closed position. All right, we've got page one and page two joined together. 
Okay, so now we've got a mountain fold between these two. So see where this, this one's sticking out here. So we've got to bring the left side of this one over to meet it. So see, it's going to join in the back. That's what I was talking about earlier, that you, you join these in front of the frames, and then these ones you join the back of the frames. So that's those yellow tabs that are going to be, this one's a little harder to show on camera. The, the yellow tabs are then now going to line up and glue to the uh, brown ones. Okay, so it's the yellow ones. And this time it's gonna be, those yellow ones are gonna end up being a valley fold. So whereas the first tabs we folded a mountain style, these ones are gonna end up being valley. And those brown tabs are gonna sit right down onto those yellow ones, okay? So these yellow ones, remember, we kind of set the location of these a little bit by eye, right? So if we just bring this over and stick it into the glue, we may not get it exactly right. So what we probably wanna do instead is keep pivoting the brown one until we can lay it on its face, okay? And then what we can do is take those yellow tabs over the top, see if I can get in there, and onto the back of the brown. Even if they don't line up perfectly, it will be better because then you know the the piece will close, okay? And this, this one is the tough one because it's their very small tabs. Oh, remember I said I was gonna try and tuck them between the layers, well, silly me. Sorry, I should be tucking those between the layers. Okay, sorry, I, uh, I forgot I was gonna try and get between the layers on those. I'm starting to wonder if that was even really <laughs> worth doing, but I did it, so. Uh, okay, so and now my glue is dried up on my yellow tabs. So my yellow tabs are going to fold over and onto the back of that fence like this and this okay and if i can get it started it doesn't have to be perfect if i can get it started then i can open it a little bit and do the pinch thing which is really my preference i just wasn't wasn't totally sure i lined up those <laughs> those little yellow tabs i made i wasn't sure i lined them up all that great so that was a way for me to uh to get it right. Um, okay, I've made a complete gluey mess on the back here, let's see. That's what a white eraser is for. At least it's on the back. Okay, so since I pulled back those tabs of my back fence to try and sandwich between the layers, then I'm gonna glue them back on. Okay. Now those of you who are just watching this class and not crafting with me, because you're like, oh, I'm gonna do this later after I get a kit, or I'm gonna do it with my own papers or whatever. So don't put that back fence on until you get the whole thing, because look how easy it would have been for me to just sink that back fence on right now, and then I wouldn't have had to try to peel between the layers, um, you know, to get the yellow in between the two layers of fence. So, um, but if you didn't, it's fine. It just, you know, for the, for the next card, when you do the next card. Um, all right, so there we have it. So now once it's put together, it no longer folds flat except for when it's folded up, then it will fold flat. Okay, and another thing is it will fold both ways. So what I mean by that is, you know, it's, it was designed so that it's valley in the back, mountain in the front. And when you do it that way, see how you have alternating zigzags? Then when you close it up, the first page pivots around to be the front decoration. So it comes out of the card looking really pretty with the first page, and then that pivots to come inside the card. Okay, now let's say you reverse these folds and you did valley in the back, valley in the front, mountain in the front, mountain in the back. It still works. It's just that now the front of your card is basically the back of page one. And there may be times when you're like, okay, I'm gonna decorate this and you know, I want it to be that way. You don't get quite the same effect. Um, well, I guess, I don't know. It, it tends to get pretty straight, but you know, I, I think the alternating zigzags like this is, is it's a cool look. So anyway, I'll leave it to you. But that's the, the way this one was designed, was to have the alternating zigzags. But when it opens, you can see it, it makes a beautiful display piece um, like that. Um, okay, then the last piece that we have to put on is just our little corner decoration right here. Okay, so that's gonna be a little fiddly because it's all put together, but um, we're gonna do our best. So adhesive on the bottom of that piece of half grass, and I lined that up with the pattern paper, so the corner of the pattern paper. And again, I'm pressing against my hand, not against um, the project, because the project no longer flattens. Okay, and then for the blue bonnet, I tucked it under the grass and I kept it mostly on the frame. So, so just about 
well let's let's do this the top blue bonnet petal even with the edge of the frame okay and I think that's a good spot where it's it's not going to catch your fence you know it's far enough hanging over the edge that it's not going to catch your fence in that closed position so then since I'm only using half of the blue bonnet on the page I'm only going to put the adhesive on the side well the leaves will all be on but so this this left side here I didn't put adhesive on since I know that's going to be hanging out over air okay even though it would dry clear that would it's easier just to, to add it and again I'm pressing against my hands I'm reaching in and pinching against my hand not mashing against the project okay so for this one let's see yeah okay I did go ahead and assemble the flower first. Now what you may want to do when you make this flower is may, you might want to do it with a petal down versus uh, gluing between two petals um, just so you have more contact area with the stem since that's going to be out kind of over air. And then I should have one more center. I shouldn't have boldly claimed that I had all my pieces left. Um, okay, here we go. Okay, so this one, I'm going to have the flower, I think I'm going to have that flower touch that blue bonnet somewhere so that I can pin those together because I don't, I think that's going to be too wobbly. Um, it looks like on this one I glued, yeah, I glued it to the blue bonnet in the grass a little bit I mean in the vine a little bit when I glued it on okay so let's do stem first get it under the grass and then I want to make sure that wherever it touches the blue bonnet that I glue it down there too okay Oops, it slipped out from behind my grass. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, it's a little bit of a wonky garden, but it's okay. <laughs> All right, so there we go. That's the last little bit of decoration, and this card, card one, is done. Um, All right, so how do you mail this? This is sized to fit in that shorter business envelope that you can just get at any office supply store. So it's three and a half by six. With it being a three pager, it'll fit in that um, envelope, no problem. You can mail it that way, or you can just use a number 10 business envelope, the long one for a slimline card, that will work as well. Uh, will it go for a single stamp? It's probably under an ounce, um, but it's gonna be the rigidness that may make you want to use the extra ounce stamp on it, or maybe the non-machinable stamp when you go to mail it. Uh, okay, we've got card one done, and now we are going to go on Two. Let me get out the card. Card two. We're gonna use. We're gonna amp it up a little bit, and we're gonna make a double stacked album, and then we're gonna switch to the cupcakes add-ons. Okay, let's jump in on card two now. So the reason I have two here, I mentioned at the top, was because depending on where you purchase your kit, might change which paper you got for just the red. The red is the only one where um, we're using photo play papers, and so you either got the one that. Um, is the diagonal red plaid and it kind of has like mixers and baking stuff on the back or you got the more gingham straight plaid and then that one has um cute little bumblebees on the back so and we only use the red side anyway so it doesn't really matter you can see these look substantially the same um but i i made it in both colors just so it's just so that you would know that whichever color you got it's going to be beautiful either way um, and another kind of good illustration of how these really can be just used as designs and then change out the colors and, you know, make them your own um, when you go to make them again. Uh, okay, so let's, what we're going to do on this one is we're going to do both a mixed album, meaning that we're going to mix, some pages are going to be changed out for cupcakes instead of the rectangles, other pages we're going to leave them as rectangles. So we're going to do a mixed album that way, and then we're going to do this fun stacking of the pages so that we can have a double high project here. And then as another little technique is we're going to have a window in one of the pages on the front that you can see something through the window 
And then when you open it, you know, that thing disappears because where it really is is back here. And, um, and then, you know, it reveals a little greeting down here. Um, okay, so let's dive in. There was more prep work on this one, all the die cutting. But now that you've done that prep work, um, hopefully the assembly won't be too bad. Um, all right, so let's get our four pages out. Now, again, tabs always go to the right, okay? But in this case, instead of putting them all together like a four-page album, they're basically going to be a stacked album, something like this. And the one that has the hole in it is going to be in this bottom left corner, okay? We're going to alter these two to be the cupcake pages. So this is going to be just like the fence where we trimmed it out and replaced the piece with a um, with another piece, but in this case, it's going to be cupcakes. Okay, so let's recall how we do that. So you pick up the page that you want to um, alter, like in this case, we're gonna put cupcakes on it. And remember, you pivot it, okay, so that you can see the half of the rectangle that has the little tab attached, and that's gonna be the side where, in that pivoted position, you can easily cut right across on the pivot point and remove that side of the rectangle that has the little tab attached, okay? And then over here, remember, we just come a little bit in from where the, um, it's, it's, not, it's less important with the cupcakes, you know, with the fence, you're trying to make sure that you have it um, not wider than your wide fence post, but with the cupcakes a little, you know, there's plenty of room to cover it. So it wouldn't really matter how long it is. The only thing that ends up being visible is this little area right up here, which I usually disguise with a cherry. Okay, so just, you know, just basically that, that same little small stalk left in the middle of the page to get the cupcakes. Okay, and let's do the same with this one down here. Okay, pick it up, rotate it to 90 degrees so that the frame is sticking straight up. Then you can take your scissors right up next to that pivot point and cut straight across. Okay, removing that half that has the tab. Then on this side, just a, you know, either where the curve ends or next to where the curve ends, you know, something like this, okay? And we're not gonna alter this one at all. We're just gonna use that one as a rectangle. Okay, so replacing these with cupcakes, um, put it back to flat, so as you know, you pivoted. You don't want it curved over like that. You still want it flat where it started, okay? And then for these ones, rather than using wide fence posts that stops at pivot point and stuff, we have to use this right tab, and we wanna butt that tab right up to where it touches this edge right here, this inside edge. And then we're gonna center it top to bottom. So you can see there that that center cupcake is gonna rest just above the pivot point right here. And then the top of the frosting is gonna come close to the pivot point right there. And this little tab should be touching that inside edge, okay? So that's how you line up the cupcake. So I'm gonna just lift up here throw some glue. Oh, I just moved it. <laughs> I'm going to line it up again. So glue in the center section like this. I'm going to take that edge right there, hold it, and then just slide it up until I get a good placement. This is why I like glue for this because I can uh, slide it a little bit. Okay. All right. So now that's attached. It can still pivot. Okay. This cupcake will not reach the edge, but this tab will touch that edge right there, okay? And that's the proper thing. Now, you can take this one. If you've done a good lineup job on the first one, you could take this one and go over the top of the first one, put my glue here. Oop, I really didn't want it on my bottom cupcake. And then use that bottom one to help you get the up and down, you know, and then just verify that you're touching the edge over here, okay? And then you'll have two of them. So there we go. Okay, so we've done that alteration. And now what we're going to do is a little something to this page over here. Okay, so we're gonna do a little bit of work to these pages before we start gluing everything together. So for this page right here, we would like to put a rectangle of the red pattern paper on the back. And again, depending on which color you have, you're looking for one of the rectangles that you trimmed down with your trimmer during prep work, okay? And we would like to put that on the back of this page, okay, red side out. Let me show you where we're at here. Okay, we're on this page here, so let me flip it over and show you, okay? So that's, that we're on the back, okay? 
All right, so the issue is going to be that it doesn't have a hole in it yet. And um, we nested a die inside the landscape accordion and cut this window at the same time. We didn't do it afterwards. Now, another way we could have done it would be cut this page, glue the paper on, then put the die in place and run it through and it would cut through both layers. But it's actually just as easy to do it this way, which is you look on the back, you get the border the way you like it around the perimeter and you just hold it. I'm just gonna, or you could use tape. Maybe I should use some tape. So if you've got some washi or some temporary tape or a little purple tape or anything that's low tack, you can just, let's, let's do it on the tab right there. Just kind of hold that paper in place. And then from the front, you can take a pen or pencil and just trace the opening onto that paper, okay? And that's true even if you were using, you know, whichever paper you have, right? So you're either tracing onto the busy bees or you're tracing onto this. Okay, so now, and I'm gonna leave that little tape in place because that reminds me which way it was. Um, then I can just take my scissors and go in there and cut on that line. Okay. Now I, you can cut on the outside of the line so that it removes it, you know, so you won't see it if you want. So you don't have to use a eraser or anything on it. I'm just gonna cut a little bit on the outside of the line. This is the back of the page that, you know, is not even a viewing page really, but okay. All right, so now I have that hole cut in the paper and then I can flip this over and I remember that my tape was on the side where the tab was so this should fit that opening, okay, and still leave me that little border around the edge. And it doesn't matter too much if a little bit of the paper is visible here because we're going to put a frame on the front that looks like this. And that opening is a little smaller still. So here's what I mean. See, it's going to clean everything up on the front. On the inside, you're actually going to see a little bit of the red frame peeking into the opening. So the precision on this is not, you know, anything to be stressed out about. Okay, get that right around that opening. Okay. All right. All right, so we've got that paper on keep picking up pieces and putting them into my work area. Um, okay, and that could be, like I said, depends on which paper you have, it could be the, the square the square red. Um, okay, so now I think we can go ahead, let's see, do we want to, yeah. Yep, 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 let's go ahead and put these together. Okay, so, it wouldn't really matter whether you overlapped the bottom one over the top of this one or whether you overlapped the top one. But I just, I don't know why, but I kind of like to put the bottom one over this one, okay? So maybe before we do that, let's go ahead and work those tabs on the side because this is thick cardstock and you may want even want a bone folder for that. So let's, let's work those side tabs, okay? That's also so we can see them when we're gluing these pages together that we don't put adhesive in the tab area. That's nice thick cardstock, which I love for accordions. Okay, all right. And then on these ones, it's gonna get cut off, but we might as well fold it because it'll make it easier to find the line for, you know, for cutting. Okay, so. All right, so now when we glue this one over this one, we just want to overlap the middle area and we don't want to glue the two tabs together. Okay, so we're going to only use adhesive through this area to glue the page part together because actually we're going to trim away some of the tabs so that we don't have a double thick tab in that area. So let's start by putting the adhesive all over this section. But we're going to stop when we get to the fold line. Okay, just like that. And then 
you're looking to have the left edge match and have both the inside edges match. So I'm even going to pick it up because I think that might be easier to just get my fingers in and make sure that those are lined up straight. Okay. So this section right through here has been glued together. Okay. And then on the tabs, what we have here is, I mean, we just really don't want a double tab in this area. So what you can do is just basically trim, you know, use the first one as a guide to trim the second one. And this is the overlapping area, right? So I can take that out. Okay. And it really would be fine to to taper this one you know basically she basically just kind of moved the taper you know from down up a little bit so that it's just a single layer through there as we glue it to the other one okay all right so there's our first page and then our second page is going to we're going to do the same thing but this time we don't have to worry as much about the tabs because we're going to cut them off anyway so you could cut those off first if it's easier or i'll try to just cut them off for a second because so i can take my trimmer and go through the whole layer. Okay, so again, I'm lining up the left edge and the inside edges, which I think is easier to do by picking everything up. So I can, you know, feel that that's aligned and feel that these are aligned. Okay, and then you can use your scissors to trim off this, or since it's a long piece, I might just grab my trimmer here. Okay, since I pre-folded, I'll be able to see that line really easily to take it off with my trimmer. So that's just page two. We, we, we still need the tabs on the first page to join these two together, okay? And let's go ahead and do that. All right, so to join the pages together, we're gonna use adhesive all over these tabs. Okay, and then, you know, on the first one where I just said, well, just hold it like this and do it. I think on this one, you may wanna go ahead and fold it like a book and get it over the top of the first one. Um, and it may not be exactly perfect. I mean, it should be close to perfect, but I mean, you know, I mean, you've glued two pages together. So, I mean, what I guess the more important thing would be that this line is the same, even if this one's a little off, because that's where it's going to sit on the table. You know what I mean? So the bottom edge. And then you can fold those over and onto the back of the page. All right, so there you go, our double stacked accordion card, okay, just like this. All right, so once again, we are going to do some decorating. Let me flip this over. Let's go ahead and do some decorating of these front panels before we find something I can use to prop that. Oh, well, I guess I could just do it like this. <laughs> I guess I could just fold it flat and then we could just do it like this. That makes sense. Um, okay, so in these top cupcakes, um, what I find is easiest is if you glue the frosting on first and you just have an equal amount of red showing around the top edge and then you put the liner on the bottom, kind of keeping that same thing and then it's going to overlap the frosting a little bit. So I find that that is the easiest. So if you want it to match mine, which of of course, you can make creative choices with your pieces. You don't have to have it match mine perfectly. But if you want it to match mine, then the yellow frosting will go in this first panel. Okay. Then one of your patterned paper frosting pieces, the one that has the holes, the sprinkle holes cut into it. I have an absolute mess of pieces here. There we go. Here's one. Okay. And that's the one where we put the little, the, the sprinkles die over the top and cut it into the frosting so that all the sprinkles would be holes on this one. 
Okay, that's going to be in the center section. All right, and then pink frosting on the right cupcake. So these pieces were cut with the cupcakes add-ons die set. And it does have that cool emboss, you know, feature that you can get lines in the um, in the frosting and you can get a cool pattern on the uh, cupcake liner as well. Pink liner for the yellow cupcake. And again, I'm just looking at the bottom to kind of keep a, the same amount of Order, and then typically the ends of the liner will just kind of come up to the first bulb of frosting. Let's see if you can move on. Get to the spot where that'll stay in focus. It's kind of there and there. All right. Then I did blue cupcake liner for the center one. And then green cupcake liner for the pink one. Okay, I put a red now you have red heart. You have red hearts that were cut with the cupcake die, and you have red hearts that were cut with the baking charms die, and they are substantially similar. If you substituted one for the other, you could barely tell a difference. But if you care, the one that's little tiny bit smaller is the one that came out of the baking charms. Okay, so that's the one that would fit on the whisk and the um, oven mitt and things like that. And the one that's just, I mean, a smidge larger is the one that came out of the cupcake add-ons and that's the one I used on this pink cupcake here. But again, they're so similar that it would not matter if you used one heart in place of the other or if you can't tell a difference, <laughs> then that's really a good indication that it doesn't matter. Um, okay, so that's what I'm going to do so far on these cupcakes. I'm gonna save sprinkles until we kind of get substantially more of it done because it may be a case where you just feel like, no, I got sprinkles on my own, you know? Uh, all right, so let's, uh, I don't want to put on the swirly do or the um, cherry just yet because we haven't done sprinkles. Um, so I'm going to move instead down to this bottom um, page down here. Okay, so for this one, we're going to use the red frame. And remember, this opening is smaller than this opening. So when you put your adhesive on, rather than put it on, you can, well, you can put it on the outside edge of the frame. That will work you know, and just avoid the inside edge, or you could go right around this opening with your glue, whatever you think is easier. Okay, and then we're gonna get that centered over that hole. Now, if you want to check if you've done a good job centering it, you can turn it over, and on the back, you can slide it until the, you see a pretty much equal amount of red on the inside opening, and then maybe back to the front to see if it needs a little straightening, you know. It's not like so important that it's perfectly straight, but I'm just giving you the giving you the tips, the tips and the tricks. Um, okay, so we're gonna use our cute little baking charms on this page. So I had you emboss, boy, white is the worst on this camera. I gotta say, it always gets washed out. And I don't think I can even get that embossed look to show up there, can I? I can't do it. Uh, okay, just trust me when I say it's got a very cool little emboss feature on the spatula end. But I also had you cut that out of another color for the handle. So I had you do yellow for the handle. So all you do is you just cut the handle off of the yellow one and then glue that onto the white one to change the handle color. Okay, so where I put the spatula, the rubber spatula, was I actually spanned it across the opening of the frame, leaving myself a good open area so that I can see my picture when the card is closed. But then that way when the card is open, it's not just an empty frame. It has that cool little spatula suspended across it. So 
Um, to do that, you just pay attention to where, what is going to touch the frame. So it's this outside edge and this little end of the, um, the spatula. So you would, would only want adhesive there on the two ends. And like I said, I kind of put it at, a, at an angle, something like this. Okay. All right. Then the other baking charms that I used on this page... Um, when we do charm sets like this, um, the reason they're called charms is because they have the ability to dangle the item off of a, um, you know, using a brad or something. Sometimes you may want to dangle a pop-up somewhere. And so our charm sets have those little holes at the top. Now, the baking charms are a little unique because some of the utensils are, they would have a hole anyway. So it's not a removable hole. It's just, you know, you would just use the hole that's in the rubber spatula or the pancake flipper or whatever. But like, for instance, the wooden spoon or the whisk or the rolling pin, those have an added little thing at the top with a hang hole so that if you wanted to dangle a charm on a project, you could dangle it using a jump ring or some twine. But when you want to use these as standalone objects like we do today, you can just trim that hole off. So for the whisk, I'm going to trim the hole off at the top and then it's going to get decorated with the smaller of those two hearts or any heart you can find because they're so similar that it doesn't really matter. Try to see how... I mean, it's just so close, but I use the smaller one. Um, okay, so let me, and I love using like a silver uh, cardstock uh, for the whisk. And you can get that silver cardstock through the stores um, or from the paper cut, which is where we get it from. Uh, I'm gonna put that at a nice cute angle. And then I'm gonna glue that heart onto that handle somewhere and that's slick that silver slick so you're gonna to have to give that a second to set up okay. and then I did the oven mitt and that's gonna be um, let's see it depends on the paper I think I cut them out of both colors this is the paper I'm using on this this one right yeah I'm using this paper but you you know it looks cute out of either color yeah so the gingham. That's really super cute, isn't it? Okay, well, I'm not going to mix papers. I'm going to use the one paper. Okay, so then again, the smaller of the two hearts or whatever heart you come to first, because it doesn't really matter, goes on the oven mitt. Okay, and then that can just glue over here in this, in this section, wherever you'd like it to go. And again, this one has a little loop at the top, but that's kind of that's, you would have that on an oven mitt anyway, so I don't remove it. All right, so now we've got the decorations on those two pages. All right, let's move over and do these two. Flip it around. Uh, okay, so down here, we're just going to do the two outside cupcakes because we're going to use our greeting in the middle with the wooden spoon. Kind of a hot, hot spot there. Let's see if I can find something tape runner maybe I think if that's at an angle that might be easier for you to see um okay so uh let's see top let's just start at the top at the top you're going to find another one of your trimmed rectangles okay and we're going to glue that up there to be the background for happy birthday all right or if you're using the gingham paper it'll look like that That will give you just a little slight shadow, you know, little little border of teal around the perimeter. Okay, happy birthday and happy birthday shadow were not part of the required dies for this class. So that was something that we asked the stores to pre-cut for you. And those are two separate dies because the happy birthday came out first and then uh, everybody wanted a shadow for it. So you know, you can buy the shadow separately. So they're two separate dies. Um, obviously you can use the happy birthday without the shadow. You can't really use the shadow without the happy birthday. So the shadow is definitely an up, you know, an add on purchase for the happy birthday, but that will, that will go right in there. And um, I, again, I didn't do any inking on this. So you could, if you wanted to, but uh, I just, I didn't this month. I just had it be 
the color, the beautiful colors of the cardstock. So yeah, so cardstock colors, we use my colors, um, which is um, now my colors as part of PhotoPlay. And um, so we use my colors for the cardstocks, and then we use um, the paper cut as well. So the paper cut is definitely where we go to for all of the specialty card stocks, you know, the mirror cards and the sparkly glitter stuff and all that. Um, but then we also, you know, use the paper cut uh, for some of their nice pop tone, like 100 pound colors and stuff like that. Although my colors also has 100 pound stock. So anyway, we, we do a combination of those two companies usually for card stocks. And, um, and all the card stock is at least 80 pounds usually between those two companies, 80 to 100, sometimes even a little bit higher. Um, but, and then this, and then we'll use a pattern paper company for three months worth of classes. So this series that we did, we used photo play. So, um, regardless of which, which color you got, um, or which red you got, that's from photo play for this series. And then our next series starting up in October through December, our papers are going to be from simple stories. So we just, we choose a card or a paper company, um, and use it for three months worth of classes. Uh, yeah, let's see. As far as placing this, I'm looking to see my placement. It looks like I let the Y hang off a little bit, but I mostly did a straight um, thing. The only thing that you could get yourself in trouble is if you let the Y hang off so much that it was touching an edge because then it could creak through the opening when it opened. Well, no, really, it can't because it's going that way. I don't think you can, I don't think you can make a bad choice with the placement of Happy Birthday. I mean, don't, don't take it as a challenge. But I don't think you can make a bad choice. So, oh, you can see it's my colors. Got the sticker on the back, which I guess it doesn't matter, but it's hard to get the glue to stick on the sticker. So I'm going to take this off. Okay, sorry. I'm gonna usually make sure that I don't die cut through stickers, but I did that time. So yeah, just as long as you're not into the pivot point of um, of the page, you should be fine. And then if you want to add one of your hearts, it doesn't matter which, big or small, it doesn't really matter. They're so close. Uh, over the eye and birthday, you know, that's optional. It's kind of a cute look. Adds a little bit of the bright red to the um, project. Oh, there's one on my, I had one ready for the next time. Um, okay, so there's the happy birthday page. Now let's talk about this cupcake page. We're going to use the other one of our patterned paper um, frostings. That's going to be the left cupcake. That's the one that has all the sprinkle shaped holes in it. That'll go here. Okay, and then we're going to use yellow for our right cupcake. And we're skipping the center cupcake because it's not going to get one. And then those two are going to get cupcake liners. And it's going to be... Ooh, same, ooh, I've lost a cupcake liner. I hope this isn't the piece that I didn't have you cut and then I've just, oh, I, I just lost it in the, whoo, in the fray. Uh, okay, pink liner on the left cupcake. Again, just look kind of at the bottom to get it kind of the same border. And then it'll overlap the frosting coming up to about the first bump. You could absolutely use that cupcake this cupcake set on your flat cards and card fronts too because you can take that piece there and just cut off that one tab on the right and then that's just a shadow die for a row of three cupcakes right so that could go on a scrapbook layout that could go on a card front that could be used with one of our other pop-ups it doesn't always and only have to and then of course you can use these cupcakes independently as well so um, great little set with some really super cute cupcakes plus the pieces are doubled for the cupcakes and the frosting make it easier to cut in the set. Um, okay, now you got to make a choice because if you wanted to match my original, I used the secret ingredient is always love right here. 
However, when I had to make a second original because um, of the paper swap, I also showed in the prep work video how I cut a UR suite from the same paper, a different section of the paper. So I don't know which one you cut during prep work, um, but you can kind of make your own choice as to which one, if you did them both, you know, um, decide. I'm going to just stick with what matches the, uh, the handout the, for this. So I'm going to do with the secret ingredient. It's always love. What I am looking to do here is I'm looking to center it. I'm looking to center it top and bottom, and I'm looking to center how much of it overlaps the two cupcakes. The only reason that's important at all is because we're going to hide the little bit smaller piece behind it. And so if you were way off, you know, then you wouldn't, that, that wouldn't be hidden. You'd see a little bit of it on the front. So as long as you're centered ish, um, you should be fine. Okay. So put my adhesive all over this. Okay. So just looking top to bottom, side to side, that it's Yeah. in the center-ish. Okay. All right, and then we're going to do, now I did use a little ink on the, um, sorry, my pieces are everywhere. They have escaped the confines of my cute tray and are flying all over the room. There it is. Okay, so I had you cut two of your wooden spoons because I do think this one is really cool when it's doubled. You know, it just has a little thickness like a spoon would. In neither case do we need the uh, the hole on it, but um, glue the one that you embossed. If you did take advantage of the emboss feature and do the embossing during prep work, glue the embossed one on the top of the stack because I didn't have you emboss both since um, I knew one was just for thickness and not for the feature. Um, and then just trim off the hole at the top. Okay, so if you have access to some brown ink, some kind of warm brown ink would be good, like a vintage photo or a rusty hinge. I'll use rusty hinge if you're a distress ink person. Um, and then something to ink on. Let me move this out of the way here. Uh, okay, so what I like to do is um, take a blending tool like this and then I like to do a swirl pattern and I start off of the piece and then just bring the color up onto it and I do a very light touch because you can always add more and plus distress ink will fade anyway so it it will probably fade a little bit less than this color but just a light touch and it'll really bring out that emboss feature on that wooden spoon. Okay, I don't know that I did any other inking on this project so I think we're done with ink. Um, and I mean, these cupcake liners look really cool when you ink them as well, um, and the frosting and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, you could definitely do that. Uh, all right, so where this spoon is going to go is going to go right here on the secret ingredient is love, or if you used your sweet, you should still be able to fit that um, wooden spoon kind of to the left of your greeting. And then in the, if you're doing the, the secret ingredient is always love, then you'll end up covering up the two hearts that are in the paper with your spoon. Okay. And then a little heart on that. So whichever, whichever heart you come to first, let's put it that way. It doesn't really matter on the heart size, whether it's the smaller or the bigger. We go cute little heart. Please love it. Uh, okay, so we've been working on the inside here. Okay, it's just not put together yet, so I closed it up so we could look at the pieces in the flat position. But now we're going to work a little bit on the back. Okay. Um, all right, so let's turn this like a book. Okay, one nice thing about doing things like cupcakes is that you can see which way is up. So if you had it like this, you would know really fast because the cupcakes would be upside down. But do just make sure that you turn it like a book so that your cupcakes are oriented correctly. Um, okay, so let's talk about this, um, this page over here. You know what? 
No, we need to put this, we need to put this, we need it. We can do this one. Okay, we can't, I'm, I'm gonna try not to make the same mistake I made with the uh, the fence card by gluing things on prematurely. Uh, actually, we don't wanna put the decorations on these yet until we put it together so that the decorations can cover the tabs. So we're gonna leave these two sides alone. Okay, but we can put this cupcake set up over here to kind of cover that mechanism and clean that up, plus make this double thick, which makes it a little bit nicer on the durability factor. Um, once again, we don't need the tab because we've got one already and we don't want, need two tabs to try to wrangle. So I'm gonna trim that tab off and then glue that over the top of those cupcakes. So just this, this page for now until we get it put together. Okay. Now, do you always have to put a second set of the item on the back to sandwich the mechanism? No, you can't. You don't have to, you know. I would definitely make sure on the cupcakes that you've used a pretty strong cardstock if you're not going to double it because they can bend in between the cupcakes if it's too flimsy of cardstock. So, um, but if you, yeah, if you were trying to look for place to, places to be more economical with your paper because you want to make a lot of these or whatever, yeah, you, you wouldn't have to double the cupcakes. Um, it just means that you see the mechanism. That's all it means, but it's on the back. So who's going to notice? Um, okay. So in this case, when we, let's go ahead and get the inside parts, these connected. Okay. Um, because what's nice about this one being a two page is that we still have a flat position to do all the rest of the decorating. The only place that's going to be fiddly is these pieces we have to put on the back because although I guess we could back fold it like this if we needed to. So anyway, those will be the only places that are fiddly. Okay, so for this one, um, once again, it's going to be, in between the pages is going to be a valley, okay? And then the inside pieces for the for this first page, we need to pivot the right side that has the tab attached to come inward, okay? And on this second page, we need to pivot the left side to come inward so that those those sections are meeting in the center like that. So we've got a valley on our back big pages and then we're bringing our pieces to meet in the center. Okay. Now this tab is going to attach to happy birthday. So I need to fold that tab down. Okay. And pre-work it. It's going to be a mountain fold. This tab is going to attach to that cupcake. So I'm going to fold it down. Give it a good pinch. That's thick cardstock. Okay. And that's going to be a mountain fold. All right. I do not need tabs out here because I have no page three, okay? Could you make a page three? Yeah, not for this one because we're about to cut these tabs off. But um, on your next card, sure. You could stack them up and keep going with more pages, absolutely. You just made a three-pager with the fence. So once you get to the end of the line, you cut your little tabs off and your big tabs off. But where it ends is up to you. Um, okay, so I think probably rather than just bring them across and kind of guess, I think what would be better would be to actually fold the card into the closed position like this, okay? And then we can add adhesive to those tabs and, and pinch them together in the closed position, which I think will be both easier and more accurate, okay? So start with it where you get it where it goes, okay? And then this these outsides of the, of the pivoting parts is going to go to the outside so that as you close it, those tabs are going to come and we can just put adhesive and tuck it under and glue it to that one, okay? Right? And these are mountain folds, so it does not matter if it gets right to the edge. So you can see on mine right here, when I tuck this under and glue it down, it's actually not all the way to the edge of the um, rectangle, which all that means is that I didn't perfectly place my cupcakes. You know, I should have had them just a smidge more to the right. But the nice thing about a mountain fold is it still going to work? See, it didn't have to be that accurate, um, but it is a good idea to do this in this closed position so that you can make that adjustment um, as need be. Okay, then this one, this adhesive, or the adhesive on this one, it's not, see, the whole tab isn't going to get covered. And I know on the fence when we trim some of the tab away, I don't do that on this one. I mean, it mostly gets covered and I just, I just don't think it's necessary. So once again, Go to the flat position and then you can add the adhesive to that tab that 
blue tab right there, that teal tab. Okay, tuck it under. And then glue it to the cupcake. And there you go. Okay, that wasn't hard, right? This is easy. Easy, easy, easy. Okay, now, if I had wanted to put pattern paper on the inside, I would those frames like we did on the other one, I would have done that ahead of time. But this is nice thick cardstock, the teal. And um, I like the look of it on the inside of the card, just the teal. So we only did pattern paper frames for the outside. So I didn't have to worry about connecting this because as you can imagine, if I now wanted to put pattern paper frames on there, uh-oh, I would have to cut it go around my mechanism and glue it on, which makes it a little trickier. So if you want pattern paper on the front, then always do it before. But you can do it, I can still do it for the front and the back in this, even after it's put together. Um, okay, so speaking of the back, now we have it put together, we can go ahead and add our other cupcake set right here, okay? And uh, we don't need the tab. Again, we don't need the tab on this one. Okay, and you can look and see whether or not you feel that maybe a little bit, maybe a little bit needs to come off on this side too, just because you don't want it to bunch down in that fold. So I'm going to take a little bit off of that side as well. Here's what I mean by that. That's a valley fold right there on the back. And so by taking just a little bit off, I don't have to worry about that cardstock bunching in that fold right there. So since this is mostly for strength and for the look of things, um, feel free to take a little bit off sides. Okay. Let's go in, get that lined up. I'm in the popped up position, so I do need to be mindful of um, putting pressure against my project that I definitely want to be pinching against my hand. Because, uh, you know, this is still just paper. I mean, you don't want it means it's all working off those little pivot points, so you don't want to put any mashing pressure on it, you know. Um, just seeing if I, what's nice about red on red is that you don't have to be perfect. Um, okay, oh, let me flip this over. All right, then up here on this one, let's see, I'm using this paper. We're gonna put a piece of paper, okay, and then I think, you know what? I think when I had you cut this one, I think I had in my mind that I had already done that little rectangle for the other one. Um, that is going to be, you know what, let's not put it on yet. Let's put this on. Okay, the pattern paper. So remember on the last one, the, um, <laughs> this is so long ago, earlier in this same video, when we put the um, piece on the back as a place to sign the card, and then I had you kind of disguise what you saw on the front. Well, we kind of have that same issue with this little piece as a place to sign the card um, because you want it to be covered by the cupcake when the card is closed. Okay, so this is the way the card is closed. So what you can do is, you know, I mean, what you could do is, as honestly, you could put it, you could basically place it on the back of this cupcake like this, you know, like, let's see, let's see if I can find it. Here's my purple tape. All right, let me, let me try this. What if we put some adhesive, let's go on this side. Okay, so the sticky side up, right? And then I, on the, I set it face down on top of this one. And then I close the card, or do this, let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> edit that out edit that out Karen um, let's just put adhesive on the back of it and just reach in and put it where the cupcake will cover it that seems even easier let's see something like yeah that works okay I made that too difficult basically it's not going to be in the center it's going to be closer to the bottom so that the cupcake will cover it okay um, now this one is, you know, remember I told you, oh, put it in a place where you can flatten it and sign it. This one's a little tricky because it is in the air, but for signing purposes, you could reverse the fold just to be able to write your greeting and then reverse it again into the proper. Okay. So you can do that. Um, all right. Last thing to put on the back is you have to decide which thing you want. Do you, assuming you did both, if you follow the prep work, 
um, video, I gave you that bonus idea of doing chocolate chip cookies that I kept calling cupcakes. Um, so I said, cut one of these. So in my original, I used the mixer or you could do the cupcakes in, in I'm sick, just call the cupcakes again, y'all. Okay. Or the chocolate chip cookies. That's what those are. And in either case, I just embellished it with a little heart. Okay. So I'm going to use the mixer so that I match my original, but you could use the cookies instead if you wanted to. I'm going to put that heart just kind of coming up out of the bowl like this. And if you were doing the cookies, you know, maybe this upper left area, something like that. Okay, so for this one, getting the placement, okay, you do have the option to just set it face down in that opening because that is the opening for that die, right? And you can see on the front, that's going to give you the perfect centered position, right? So if I set it in that opening and I add adhesive to the back of it, okay, and then I carefully close the card, okay, it will pick up that mixer and put it over here in the position where it will line up with that opening in the in when it's closed okay and because i it's based that i centered this essentially and this is a bigger piece then see it's all hidden behind the greeting that's on the front okay well we are getting close here all right so let's talk about front and back pattern paper frames okay so we had we did the exact same thing that we did with the pieces of paper um, for the fence card with one slight change instead of cutting this to three and a quarter i believe we went to three and three eighths essentially we left the full width of the side that's shared okay and then we we basically trimmed down the paper for the other two sides so as you look at your paper you have to find the side that's wider to go towards the inside. Okay, and that goes for both sets, all right? So you have to find the side that's wider um, to go with both sets. Now, one thing that I mentioned during prep work, especially if you have the straight gingham paper, is if you paid attention to how you die cut it, there is a way in which you can have the wide sides line up and the same vertical pattern going through. And you just have to find the two sets that do that, right? So that I can see that this is one of those sets where I start with this like almost full white stripe or square on this side and a little partial over here. So it would be these two where the wide sides could go over the top of each other and the pattern goes through. It's not as easy to do that with the diagonal paper, but with the um, gingham paper, that was definitely something that you could have done during die cutting if, if that were something that made a difference to you. But it's not going to be something that anybody notices anyway. So even if you didn't do that, you're only going to notice it now because I'm pointing it out, but we're going to put a little streamer over the scene and nobody is going to notice that your, you know, your pattern skips a little bit from top to bottom. Um, so it's definitely not something to stress out about, but it was something that I mentioned during die cutting that you could pay attention to that. If that's something that was important to you. I don't think the diagonal paper, uh, does the same, but let me just check it. Is it this one's a little different. It's a diagonal is probably not going to line up no matter what you do. That one's closer. Um, yeah, I don't care. So I'm going to use these two. Um, okay, so uh, it doesn't much matter which one you glue on first, whether you do the top one or the bottom one. You may look at it and see, you know, where you want to put your streamer to cover the seam. So on both of mine, I think my seam is right here at the top, which means I put the top one on first and then the bottom. And then I just put a, a streamer to kind of cover the seam. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. So, right. So let's, uh, while I'm gluing these on, let's talk about your other um, education opportunities. So I teach every month. And what I do is... I'll do two, the first two classes of each series, each, you know, each time we have like a new release or whatever, um, I'll do two months of Zoom classes and then there'll be a month that's a virtual class. What you're watching right now is a virtual class. So you're, um, the virtual classes are on YouTube and they're pre-recorded. So you're not able to 
talk to me right now unless you happen to be watching the premiere and then I'm in the chat box so you could ask me a question there if you happen to be watching it right when it first premieres September 2nd at you know 11 a.m. Central um, but the other two months are zoom classes and so the format of them is identical to what you see here prep work video you know and handouts come to you by email 10 days before class you do your prep work but then the class day what you're watching right now instead of it being a pre-recorded YouTube video it's a live Zoom session. Um, and that way you're able to stop me and ask me questions. And, you know, it's just much more, um, you know, it's, it's, it's like being, you know, it's a virtual classroom, like you're in the class with me. Now, you can't, you know, well, you can pause me because you can say, hey, Karen, stop or whatever. But, um, you know, in general, it's, it's um, you know, it's not completely self-paced. You know, it is like being back in a classroom again. Um, but it's, you know, the people are just so fun and nice and it's just such a great group of people. And, um, you know, a lots of times like we'll have, we'll do one card and then we'll take a 15 minute break and then we'll come back for the second card and, um, people will show their, their cards that they've been working on. And, um, you know, you can just get lots of tips and tricks, both from me and from the students, because they're chiming in with clever adaptations they've done. Like, you know, when we were just talking about these frames and how you might hide the seam or this and that, you know. I mean, I don't have every idea in the world, right? But, you know, sometimes a student will be like, oh, well, what I did is, at, or Beverly, one of our students that's probably watching this, she had posted in a, um, a Facebook group that one of the stores has about these classes and said, oh, well, I found a trick for, you know, how I centered the die when I was doing this window cut. And she shared that with everybody. So, um, you know, it's a great opportunity to, um, to take part in more of an interactive class where you actually get to talk to me and stuff like that, you know, ask your questions. I can help you if you, you know, you say, oh, mine doesn't look like that, Karen. And then, you know, we'll highlight you on your video and I'll look at your project and all that. Um, those classes, the Zoom classes are um, each month that we don't have a, um, a virtual class and there's a, a Zoom class and we'll still list it on our events page on our website on KarenBernston.com. But um, the kits for Zoom classes are sold only through our participating stores. So we on KarenBernston.com don't make any classes or any kits for our Zoom classes. Those are entirely something that we do with our retail um, partners. So you'll go to a store to buy those Zoom kits. Um, but that's a fun that's a fun opportunity as well. Um, all right, so now I have all my paper on, and now I'm just too embellishing. Um, all right, so let's start first with the fact that we have a seam between our papers. And what you can use for that is you can use the swirly do, um, uh, whatever these things are, confetti streamers things. Okay, so I mean, I don't. It doesn't really much matter what colors you use. You have several. If you really wanted to perfectly match mine, I used a green one on the right side and a yellow one on the left side of this front of the thing when it's open or when it's closed, like this. So when you're seeing whisk and all that stuff. I used green over here. And, then, uh, and yellow over on this left side. Now we do record those zooms. I should say one more thing about the zooms, which is, oh, I'm putting this on the wrong side. Um, we record them. So if you are signed up for a Zoom class and you can't make it or you can't make the whole thing because it goes as long as it goes, you know? So, I mean, it's, we generally budget two hours per card. So, you know, in a 15 minute break in between. So, you know, you're, you're committing to your whole Saturday basically to do the class. Um, but let's say you have to, you can only make the first card and then you have to dive out or something like that, or you can't make it at all. Um, you can watch the replay, which comes out the next day. Um, now, we do not make the Zoom classes public, though. So in other words, um, you, you do have to be a student that has purchased a kit through one of the participating stores to be able to participate in those Zoom classes. And, um, and, and I, don't, I don't put the video recordings public because, um, you know, sometimes the, hi the students are highlighted on the video and because they've asked a question or whatever. And then I don't, I don't you know, I don't feel comfortable having that be out there public. So um, the YouTube classes, we can make these public, but I don't make the Zoom classes public. So you have to purchase a kit to join in the fun on those. Um, I did red. So I'm flipping over to the back. I did red on this seam and then I did green over here 
that. But again, I don't think color much makes much of a difference. And you know, just if you place it in a way that it draws the eye away from the seam, even if it doesn't fully cover the seam, I think it accomplishes the same thing, you know. So there's my seam under there and under here. Um, but it's not perfectly covered, you know. Um, okay, then, so for other decorations, um, what we have left is, all we have left is sprinkles, cherries, and, um, and then the last little swirly dews that I don't want to put on until we um, have our uh, sprinkles on. So let's talk about sprinkles. You probably are going to want some tweezers or if you've got some kind of pokey tool. I can always use this dental tool. <laughs> it's just, I don't know, even know where I picked it up. Probably Amazon or somewhere, but you know, it's just it's a dental tool, but you know, it works really well for things like that. What I had you do is I had you cut sprinkles out of five different colors. All right. And I had you put double-sided adhesive on the back of that cardstock before die cutting so that it, they would be stickers. And I told you during prep work that it didn't matter to me if when you pulled the die out, you lost a few sprinkles in the process. It wouldn't matter because you have more than enough sprinkles because um, you're not, you know, you're not going to fill every one of these holes or anything. Some of them are just going to be the red shining through. But as you see here, let's look, look at this pink cupcake here. So you can see that the majority of the sprinkles are still red, which means I didn't, I didn't put a red sprinkle in there. I just let the red shine through. But I took some of these colors and I filled in some of those sprinkles um, in other colors. So I find that if I bend my thing and then I just pick up with a tool or some tweezers that sprinkle, and then I can just nest it down there in the hole. So maybe I do like three out of each color except red because it's already red, so I don't need to do red. Oh, let's do one more of these. Uh, let's do, there's more of the bar sprinkles than there are anything else. So the ones that are the decorative shapes are the hearts, the stars, and the circles. So, um, you know, maybe with each color you do one or two, you know, one specialty, you know, like I did a yellow circle, and then I do two more that are bars, you know, so it's up to you. I mean, I don't mean to tell you how to, how to sprinkle your cupcakes, but it's kind of the strategy that I used, I guess. Um, okay, and then I'm gonna do a teal heart. And then I just kind of look and see if I feel like it's filled in you know, where there's not a ton of red side-by-side -side sprinkles everywhere, you know, that it's like it's got a good little color. Um, that one's kind of hard to get into. I'm going to leave that one red. Well, let's put this one over here. Okay. All right, and then my last color that I'm going to use is green. Uh, looks like a star would be a great one. Okay, if this seems way too fiddly for your taste or your eyesight, I hear you, I hear you. Um, just leave your sprinkles red, they're, they're gorgeous. You don't have to, you don't have to, uh, crafting's fun, you know? You don't have to struggle. You don't have to add sprinkles. Sprinkles are optional. Okay, so there, that, uh, I think I might add mm, one more in the middle and I guess I'm gonna make it yellow. Look, like I had a bunch of red all in a row there. Okay, that's good. All right, so there's my filled in sprinkles, which once I get my filled in sprinkles, then I can put my blue swirly do across that cupcake. So do that. Okay. All right, now over here, I just put some sprinkles on the yellow cupcake. Now, obviously not yellow because it wouldn't show up. So just my other four colors and I just put a few, you know, and again, I just did the same kind of rule where it's like I did maybe a specialty shape and then a bar out of each color to start and then just filled in more if I needed it. So if I do, you know, say a um, star and a bar. And you don't have to think too much about sprinkle placement. Uh, heart. Oh, it's just circle. I haven't been circle yet. Circle and heart up here. And let's do a bar right here, and then maybe a couple pink ones. Mm, that 
might be enough for me. I did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I did like eight sprinkles. How much did I do on this? Four, five, six, seven. Oh, I did like nine. Okay, let's do one more. One more pink. Okay, how's that? So, you know, sprinkle as much or little as you like. Now let's talk about these cherries. Okay, so the way the cherries work from the cupcake add-ons is there's a die that will cut the cherry stems. We cut those out of the green, the willow green color. Okay, it cuts both at the same time um, and they're mirror image from each other. You know, the stems go in opposite directions. And then there's a die that will cut two identical cherries. And the cherries have a slit in them. So if you can take a tool or something in there to kind of widen out the slit, it'll make it easier to weave your cherry stem through that um, slot from inside the cherry. And then the green bulb on the back is going to glue down, but you can alter the direction of the stem to your liking before you glue it down. And then just go in there and glue down the green to the back of the red. Okay, so then the, the stem actually comes out. Oh, I got that one coming really crooked. Let me see. Maybe I got that a little bit. There we go. Okay, so again, take your cherry, take a tool or something, a pokey tool works really well, and widen out the, hollow out the um, slit. Then from inside or from underneath, get the cherry stem through, rotate it to wherever you want it, and then just glue the green to the red on the back. stuff. Sometimes you just squeeze your glue bottle and let go and trust like, oh, I bet glue came out. <laughs> Most of the time it has, but I guess that time it didn't. Um, okay, so now I've got my two cherries, one with stem kind of pointing to the right and one stem sw swooping to the left. And I use the one with the cherry stem swooping to the right over here on this cupcake. And I do not have to keep it in the frame because this Wrote, this is going to come outward. It's not ever going through the frame. Does that make sense? So it does not matter if your cherry stem ends up up over the top of that uh, paper a little bit. Okay, it won't really matter. Um, plus, it'll you know, it'll pull it through even if it doesn't. So it's just a cherry stem. So just put it at the top of your cherry. I mean, at the top of your cupcake, at whatever angle you like. All right. So I think that's everything for this side so let me flip it over and then we'll do the um, sprinkles and the swirly do and the cherry for this last little row of cupcakes and then we're done mm, okay same 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 z's on the um, sprinkles so i'm going to start here in the middle now again i don't need red for that because um it won't it would just be red on red. I mean, you could inlay every single sprinkle if you wanted to. There may be a special card that you want to make sometime where you want to inlay every single sprinkle. But the idea is that using the sprinkle die to uh, remove the, you know, have the sprinkles be holes, is that you really don't have to inlay them at all if you don't want to. And let, let's say you wanted to have different color sprinkles, um, you could put it over the top of a light color that you've either colored with inks or you could color through the openings to color different sprinkles, different colors. You know, there's different ways to achieve it without um, having to uh, die cut and inlay sprinkles. So that's definitely an optional thing, but it's kind of fun. And like if you need to cut a bunch of tiny little pieces for like a shaker card or something, just remember that you have this, um, you have this die, you know, you have this cupcake, um, yeah, cupcake add-ons die that includes this die that will cut all these little sprinkles. And you can cut them without the double-sided adhesive on the back and then they'll just be uh, stickers, or they won't be stickers, that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, maybe a circle over here. Okay, do I have all the colors? Yes, I think I could use one right here, and it's going to be teal. All right, then you can use your uh, sprinkles on the other ones, again, just as individual. 
sprinkles. Okay. Oh, I used most of my teal sprinkles. You can tell which color I like the best, huh? <laughs> I'm gravitating towards those teal ones. Okay, there's a green. Pink. Oops, no, no pink over there. Oh, red could go over there though. Oh, the red sprinkles are cool. I'm a fan. Oops. This one needs yellow, this one needs red. I think I'm adding more sprinkles than I did on my original. Right there, and then this one needs a yellow sprinkle. Some sort of a star, that makes sense. Yellow star. Okay, I'm going to call that good for sprinkles. And so then the, the cherry, so the cherry on this one, um, I put it on the center, and then this is your opportunity to kind of cover up some of that leftover mechanism that was uh, left there, you know, when we put it together, when we, we trimmed away that rectangle. So you can kind of put that cherry up there to disguise that a little bit. And then I put a yellow swirly do kind of across these two cupcakes, something like this. You know, again, open for your creative interpretation. That's definitely up to you. Put them. Okay, I have swirly dues left, which I have a feeling I probably used inside on this outside edge to disguise the seam. And yes, I did. I could see I put one here and I put one here. This one I had go over the edge and then I think I lined it up with that one, but I don't know if I'm going to do that this time because I don't have as much. I guess I could. If I put it. No, I don't know. I'm probably not going to do that because I didn't pay attention to the swirl location. That one's not bad. That one's kind of kind of similar. I'll, I'll do that. But I don't. I don't. That doesn't matter to me. If those line up. I think I only did that because I had so much swirl out over air that I was worried about it falling apart. So I put another one on the inside and sandwich them. But this one is much more supported by the thing, so it's not as important. Like I didn't line it up perfectly, I just put it in the general same location. And then this one over here. Okay, we did it. We did it. We did it. We did it. We made two full cards in 8 million hours. I don't know how long this video is until I get it into the, uh, into the computer. Uh, okay, so there is our card number two. Now this one is actually, um, oh, did I miss a heart somewhere? I probably did. There's probably some heart somewhere on here that I didn't put it on. Let's see, this is my card right now. Okay, heart. Okay, I should have one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I have one here and here. Well, maybe I just cut too many. Well, I don't see any missing hearts. Anyway, if you end up with an extra heart, you can put that wherever you want. Uh, okay, so the size of this card is, it's six inches on the length, but it actually ends up being six and a half on the height because of the two pieces um, glued together. Um, so you are gonna have to go, you won't be able to use a six by six envelope. Now they do make seven by seven envelopes, or you can go with a um, six by nine, like an A9 envelope would hold this card for mailing. Um, it is, once again, it's definitely thin enough and light enough 
for a single stamp, the issue is only going to be if it's if they think it's too rigid. But yeah, I might try this one for a stamp. I think it would probably go for a single stamp. But it, you know, to be safe, you can always put that extra ounce stamp on or that non-machinable stamp, um, whichever whichever you want. Uh, all right, I guess I could put my face back on, but you all, I'm sweating. I have been teaching now for however many hours. Let me see. Uh, here I am. It's dark now. <laughs> it wasn't dark when we started, but it's dark now. Um, anyway, thank you all for joining me for our September virtual class. Uh, you'll find some information on the links below um, for the stores that may still have some kits. And you can always check our events page and subscribe to our newsletter to find out the next time we're doing one of these. All right. Thanks, everyone. Bye.